Nitrates, 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 nitrates. Oh, uh, uh, hey, hey there, fish keeper. I see you're back again. You were okay with the last video about decreasing nitrates in your tank, but you're here for a far greater concern, am I right? I knew it. You're having trouble with your tanks increasing nitrites. Don't worry. I know exactly what you need to know and how you should do it. Thank goodness you found a friend in me. Sorry about that. Nitrite concentrations are crucial. Neglecting excessive nitrite levels might have disastrous effects on your fish. But like I've said, you're lucky enough to have me because today we explore the realm of controlling nitrite in aquariums to ensure your aquatic pet's constant flourish. All that information can be found only here at Aquarium Store Depot. Before you develop a solution, you must know how and where the problem's coming from. So today, we'll first discuss nitrite and what causes it to be present in your tank. The nitrogen cycle in an aquarium depends critically on controlling the nitrite levels. With sophisticated testing tools, it might be easier to identify this colorless and odorless molecule. If left uncontrolled for too long, excessive nitrite concentrations can result in significant issues for your fish, including decreased appetite or even death from nitrite poisoning. Understanding the nitrogen cycle is also crucial for maintaining a fish-friendly aquarium. Beneficial bacteria are involved in this process, turning ammonia into nitrite and nitrate. A cycle lasts two to six weeks, although cycling without fish can speed up this process. We have a video on how to do exactly that in the card displayed above. The initial event in a cycle is an ammonia surge, after which it becomes undetectable. As colonies that consume ammonium are present but not yet in sufficient numbers to convert nitrite, high nitrite levels without measurable ammonia levels indicate that the cycle has partially been completed. Nitrite levels in an established tank must always be zero to produce a secure and prosperous environment for fish. Due to the absence of helpful bacteria in fresh tanks, high readings are regular but should be corrected before introducing any fish. It is advised to constantly monitor these levels, since some freshwater fish species might get stressed at levels as low as 1 ppm. Usually, overfeeding, overcrowding, or poor care result in elevated nitrite levels in freshwater aquariums. A higher frequency of water changes is frequently required because of this. But how can I possibly know if my nitrite levels are high? It's elementary, my friend. All you have to do is test the levels of nitrites in your aquarium by using the following three test kits on your screen. Let's briefly discuss them all, starting with the liquid test kits. When you add a few drops of testing solution to aquarium water, these kits may identify differences in it. While this adds a little more time, their accuracy makes them quite popular with aquarists seeking trustworthy outcomes. Next are the test strips. Test strips may measure nitrite levels in your fish tank quickly and easily. They're practical for quick testing or spot inspections because they may also be used to assess other water qualities. Test strips provide a simple method to keep track of how much is present, even if they're less accurate than liquid tests in detecting the number of nitrites. And of course, the digital tester. Purchasing a digital tester will make monitoring nitrite levels more accessible and accurate. These instruments provide accurate readings quickly, and some can assess additional variables besides nitrite. Consequently, consumers seeking reliable ways should consider purchasing a digital tester, especially if speed and accurate results are desired. However, please remember that these test kits are very pricey and best suited for folks with multiple tanks. Oh, so testing your tank's nitrite level isn't all that hard, huh? All I have to do is buy one of these here test kits. That's right. But of course, when you find out the problem is your tank's nitrite levels using these test kits, you should prepare yourself with a few possible solutions to solve the issue. Before I share some knowledge, giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel would surely inspire us to serve you with fresh, new information that could help you succeed in this fish keeping hobby. Now, let's discuss the three immediate actions you can take to lower your nitrite levels. First on the list is by adding beneficial bacteria. The nitrogen cycle may be encouraged and a healthy fish ecology can be established in your aquarium by adding helpful bacteria such as TurboStar. Introducing these beneficial microbes improves the conversion of nitrite into nitrate while also controlling overall levels to maintain the correct well-being of your aquarium fish. 
This boost should be added, particularly after significant water changes, as well as new tank additions to ensure fast and efficient cycling again. Next is through partial water change. The aquarium's nitrite levels can be controlled with periodic partial water changes. To maintain a healthy environment in your tank, you must also eliminate sources such as fish waste and uneaten food. This helps lower concentrations of nitrite by diluting them. For this immediate action, you can use a product like Seachem Prime to dechlorinate tap water to ensure the system is ready to introduce new liquids. Prime will eliminate any contaminants such as ammonia and nitrite from your tap water. Any problems with excessive nitrite concentrations won't develop into major ones over time with regular partial replacements. That's a guarantee. The last step in this section is adjusting the feeding process. Remember our previous video about lowering nitrite by avoiding overfeeding? This is one of the reasons why this matter is essential, because an aquarium nitrite's level may be efficiently controlled using the proper feeding techniques. Avoid overfeeding your fish and give them what they can ingest in a minute or two to reduce extra waste production, which raises ammonia and nitrite levels. Doing this makes it possible to maintain a better environment while giving fish the food they need to stay healthy. It's crucial to maintain prudent feeding practices to ensure that ammonia and nitrite concentrations are under control. Also, that the environment is free of ammonia and that your fish don't suffer from nitrite poisoning. If you have trust issues and think those immediate actions we discussed weren't enough, you could try these four long-term solutions for keeping your nitrite as low as possible. Let us begin by discussing the importance of aquarium filtration. Aquarium filtration systems can help prevent ammonia and nitrite increases. The biological chambers of these units will house microorganisms that will consume nitrites. In an aquarium, several different types of filters can be used. Here's a few examples of each type flashing on your screen now. Each of these categories has benefits and drawbacks. Canister filters are generally used in freshwater tanks, whereas sumps are frequently used in more sophisticated saltwater fish tanks. The second factor to consider is proper aquarium maintenance. Maintaining your aquarium correctly is crucial to keeping nitrite levels low and giving your fish a healthy environment. Filters should often be cleaned to guarantee water quality, and dead organisms and uneaten food particles should be removed from the tank. Undertake weekly or bi-weekly water changes, depending on the aquarium stock level. An efficient biological filter must first be established, which takes around four weeks for most cycles. Maintaining your filter units is necessary, whether you keep a freshwater or saltwater tank. Your mechanical and chemical filtering parts should be cleaned out regularly. Clean your motors and pipework to keep your tank working at its best. You'll need to maintain balanced conditions with the proper maintenance practices, lessening the strain on aquatic life for healthier occupants. The third long-term action is the production of live plants. Nitrogen stability is mainly dependent on the presence of living plants. They serve as biofilters that remove a lot of ammonia while reintroducing oxygen to your water column, which has several positive impacts. It'll be beneficial to maintain and regulate population density properly. Nitrites serve as fertilizer as plants will absorb them and provide oxygen delivery, which preserves a balance of beneficial nutrients for aquatic living forms. That's not to say that nitrite levels won't be high if you have plants. They just help the levels evaluate as they quickly absorb them in a mature tank. These living plants provide beauty and serve as a haven for many fish species and subsurface critters. Additionally, certain plants are better adapted than others to receive nutrients. Several plants that are excellent in nutrient reduction are shown on your screen. But bear in mind that plants may also be harmful. Dead plants can cause poor water quality and unexpected nitrite surges. Do your part with maintenance to help reduce high nitrite concentrations in your system. Some of these plants were already discussed in our video about lowering nitrates. If you wish to know more about these plants, you can visit our YouTube channel, where educational videos are posted all the time. Last in our list is the importance of population management in your tank. Low nitrite concentrations must be maintained by keeping the proper number of fish for the size of your aquarium. These levels can increase in an overcrowded tank, which could be dangerous for fish and other aquatic life. Changing your water regularly helps this a ton, since that in itself helps lower the levels of nitrite. By effectively regulating your population, you develop a more balanced environment free from any problems brought on by excessive nitrite levels that can potentially jeopardize everyone's health. It'll also keep your own personal stress levels low and not worrying about your fish tank.
And there we have it, the list of actions you can outline to achieve a healthier tank for your lovely fish. If there's one thing I want you to know or take away from this video, it's that it's crucial to monitor and regulate the nitrite levels in your aquarium. A thorough comprehension of the nitrogen cycle and constant attention to detail while monitoring the parameters present status are skills that make you a successful aquarium owner. As a result, both short-term corrective actions and long-term remedies, starting from the immediate action of adding beneficial bacteria into the tank, making partial water changes, and altering feeding habits, to those long-term solutions of providing adequate filtration, proper maintenance, providing the tank with live plants, and maintaining healthy stocking levels, everything we discussed in this video should be followed. Still have questions? You can visit our official website at AquariumStoreDepot.com where frequently asked questions about nitrite matters are answered. You can also find some information about the nitrites in a saltwater tank. I know this topic is vast and sounds complicated, especially if you're a beginner, but I hope we can give you our best shot to understand everything about how to decrease nitrite in your tank. Hope to see you again on our next fantastic topic, fish keepers. Thanks for watching.